To draw this holly, you're going to need a pencil, a pen, an eraser, and some watercolors. You can use any coloring medium that you like, but I'm using watercolors in this video. You'll need a paintbrush and some water. So let's get started. We're going to start off with a Y shape. So just kind of drawing a very rough Y shape. So one line going up like that, one line going up like that, and then another one coming down like so. Just do it really lightly in pencil. Don't press too hard because we're going to raise these lines. Next, we're going to be adding the berries in the center. So just three little circles, one circle here on this line. We're gonna do another circle there on that line. And then this one just comes over here. So three little circles, they don't have to be perfect, but go too fast, just hit pause and rewind. Now we're going to do the rough outlines of the leaves. So we're not gonna add any spines on just yet. So just rough outline. There we go, there's one. Just like that. We're gonna do this one. There we go. And then this one here. Excellent, just like that. Now we're going to be adding two more little leaves. So just one to draw the line coming round like that. And then we're just going to draw the outline like so. And then the same up here. So just a line going directly upwards. And then we're going to be drawing the outline. Excellent work. I'm going to be switching to pen now, but please carry on in pencil. This is just so that you can see it easier on camera. So I'm just gonna go over these uh, little berries that we did before. So just one there, one there, and one there. I'm just gonna add like the little end of the berries. There we go, just little dots, that one like that. Now we're going to be adding the spiny leaves. So add the first one. We're gonna be following the shape of the leaves that we did before, but we're going to be adding some spines to it. Now, the spines are only actually found near the bottom of the holly bush, where it's more likely that it's gonna be eaten by animals. So the higher up you go, the less spiny the plant is. So there we go. And then there's a big old spine here. There we go. Another big one there. And then it joins back there. Now this one here, I'm going to be starting here. And there's a big old spine there. So I think this little sprig of holly was found quite near the bottom of the bush because it's very, very spiny. There we go. So holly bushes are either male or female, and it's the female plant that has the berries, but the female plant needs a male plant in order to produce the berries. So they actually need each other. There we go. And the holly berries and the leaves and the bark, they're all mildly poisonous because they contain this chemical called theobromine. That's a substance similar to caffeine, but it can be quite harmful to pets. So it's useful to know that if you've got it inside the house, just to keep it out of reach of your household pets. There we go. Now, this one here, it's round like this. You'll get the hang of this. So once you've done a few of the leaves, it gets much easier. There we go. So have you put up any holly in your house at the moment? Have you put up the Christmas decorations yet? We haven't. <laughs> there we go, only two more to go. Okay, so this one behind here. This one's quite thorny, spiny. Like that. Like 
like so and then one more Now, if you haven't gone over it and pen yet, go over it and pen and then raise all the pencil marks. So I'm going to be using watercolours. I've mixed a couple of these different greens, a tiny bit of yellow and a little bit of white. And I'm going to paint a very dilute green over the leaves. I've then mixed in scarlet and a little bit of white just to make this really, really pale red, almost pinky, isn't it? Just to do the berries. This is going to be the first layer and we're going to add on a bit more brighter red. So just doing this really carefully so it doesn't seep into the green because the green's still wet. Okay, great. So I've mixed a couple of the greens together to make quite a kind of a nice rich green which we're going to go over the leaves so we're going to use different shades of green and we're going to keep the stem the line the veins going through the middle we're going to keep that kind of clear so i'll show you what i mean so i'm just going to draw the veins coming out you know don't be too prescriptive about this it's it's a watercolour, so it tends to do its own thing, so don't worry too much about getting it completely accurate. Okay. So I'm leaving this line in the centre, just showing the lighter green peeping through, just like so. And then we just colour in the rest of it, just like this. Easy, huh? I'm not going to go quite to the tips of all the the little kind of spiny bits because they're a little bit lighter sometimes this one's not but see this one is so some of them yeah some of them no there we go so there are 400 species of holly and holly has been used as a winter decoration for thousands of years. Both the Druids and the Romans used it. And, you know, obviously now it's become um, a Christmas decoration. And the song, The Holly and the Ivy, I'm not going to sing it for you because I've got a cold, so it probably won't, won't turn out very well. But the line that goes, the holly bears the crown, you probably know it, you're probably humming it to the self now. Um, that refers to the crown of thorns in Christianity. It refers to the crown of thorns that Jesus wore. Um, so yeah, it's really interesting. It bears many significance for many different cultures. I'm going to speed this up a little bit now. It's lovely using watercolours to do wet on wet. So just load up your paintbrush with a different or darker shade and then just dip it in to the parts that you've already done, just where it's a little bit darker. do the same here I've loaded up my paintbrush dollop of really dark nice rich intense green I love the way with watercolors you don't quite know what's going to happen with them it could be an absolute disaster it could be like genius that's the great thing so I think we're all hoping for genius aren't we 
<laughs> so note to self, don't paint the ones that are furthest to the left when you're right-handed. I should know that after so many years of painting. It's funny, when you're talking and kind of teaching at the same time, your kind of your normal habits or your skills just seem to go out the window. You're concentrating so hard on what you're saying to people that don't always take notice of what you should be doing. So apologies for that. If I were you, I would start at the other end, but hey, you know, I'm just being very careful lifting my hand up. Not the end of the world, is it? So I'm just dabbing in some dashes of colour here. Oh yeah, that looks cool. Last but not least, this one. Yeah, to be honest, I probably would have done it in an anti-clockwise fashion <laughs> if I'd really thought it through at the time. So apologies for that, but hey, we know for the next time. Now I'm just going to let it dry for a bit. Now we're going to revisit these berries with a touch of crimson and a touch of scarlet. So I'm just going to draw little circles in it so that we can see where the shiny bits are on the berries. So there, there, and then there's a few on this one. And then I'm just going to colour in the rest of it very carefully. You. I'm going to mix in a little bit more scarlet. It's a little bit too crimson. All right. This is going to be the brightest thing on the page, so we've got to make them stand out a lot. There we go. As you can see, you might be able to tell that it's bleeding a little bit there. Not to worry, we can fix that. Either dab it with a, a soft tissue or just wipe it away with your um, with a clean paintbrush, preferably, not like I was doing. There we go. We're gonna paint over it in green anyway later. So I'm just gonna add a tiniest little bit of blue to that one. A little bit of blue to the crimson, just where it's in shadow, just here. Teeny weeny bit. I'm going to try and manipulate the paint now. There we go. Just adding a bit of green there. I'm going to let it dry now and then we'll fix it. <laughs> 
Okay, I just want to make these veins a little bit more yellowy green, so I'm just adding a touch more yellow to them. Right, now we're going to be fixing this little <laughs> accident that we had, well, I had. So just around here where it's actually darkest, I'm going to be just using a very, very dark green. I've mixed in some brown, some blue, and a tiniest bit of black, so very carefully. I don't want it to bleed again. Just adding it there. There we go, and also here. definitely down here. This leaf is very much in shadow, so I'm doing quite a lot on this leaf. Going to use this dark green in various parts. Adding a touch of water if I need it to blend a little bit easier. Adding just little splodges of dark where they're needed. Don't be too prescriptive over this, you know, it's just watercolours, they just kind of, it's the movement that I love about watercolours. I also find it's quite good for me to use watercolours because I'm quite a little bit of a perfectionist and I focus on like the minute details, which isn't necessarily good. Um, so watercolours tend to free me up and um, yeah, I just have to go with the flow. Quite literally. Oops, so if you go over the lines like I have, dab your paintbrush in water and just dilute it out and then mop it up with a tissue. Now going in again, even darker. So I've let it dry and here's the finished product. If you fancy more festive fun, here's a whole playlist. So check it out now.